Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor you're looking good. Better than yesterday. And tomorrow. You will shine. Meta, meta. Amen. Before we hear the words, uh, we'd like to introduce the books of the month. Uh, but before we do that, we want to appreciate uh, Pastor Flavia, who was with the team that went to Nigeria, just came back. And Pastor Flavia, why, why don't you come greet us so that we hear your voice um, all the way. Uh, from Nigeria. They were there with Pastor Regan and also Pastor K. Praise God, church. <laughs> Are you going to praise your God? <laughs> Amen. Greetings from Nigeria. We were at Daystar Christian Center. The Lord gave us an opportunity to just go and interact with a man that I personally have looked up to in terms of leadership, and especially since I came into the role of Ministry of Education and Leadership de uh, Development. Some of you may know him, but he's also a renowned name globally. Pastor Sam Adeyemi, the senior pastor at Daisa Christian Church. We got a chance to just sit with the man and listen to what God is saying to Africa. Tell your neighbor, Africa is rising. And I believe from that, Pastor Ambrose, we will have the Africa in Leadership Incubation Conference in partnership with North Africa, West Africa, South Africa, East Africa, and Central Africa. And we are trying to see how we will rotate the conferences in a core area in those regions. The message we bring to you from Pastor Sam, is that Africa has prayed enough. Tell your neighbor, Africa has prayed enough. Now it's time to take action. Tell your neighbor, it's time to take action. And one of my prayers is, as we prepare for 2022, another election in Kenya, 12 people from Parklands Baptist Church will be running for office. That's the assignment that I believe... God is giving us, and we will put those people in positions of authority so that they can make a difference in this, issue, in this nation. We have prayed enough. It is time to take action and be in key places of making decisions. The Lord bless you. Thank you so much. We have chosen uh, a theme for the month. And especially because we are praying and we have books in that direction. Uh, the first book is written by Jack Hayford. Uh, it's called The Secrets of Intercessory Prayer. Unleashing God's power in the lives of those you love. And especially when you pray for your family members, how do you pray? Uh, the author has addressed that topic. One of the members of his church by the name of Stormy Omashan has also written a book, The Power of a Praying Church. And uh, it says, Experience, experiencing God move as we pray together. How do you pray for your neighbor? How do you pray in a prayer circle and those kinds of things? And this is what she talks about prayer. The third one is prayers that get results. Now ask your neighbor, do your prayers get results? Yeah, let them answer you. <laughs> of course, they will not tell you. But a man called Tom Brown has written a book, and he quotes, he quotes a verse that says in James 5.16, the prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. At the back he says, nothing is impossible with God, when you pray effectively. These books are in our bookshop. Uh, if you get time, get a copy. Here, Paki, we believe uh, leaders 
must do what? Read. And those who read huh? are leaders. And those who put it into action are extraordinary leaders. So, look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, what was the last book you read? I hope you read the theme vision. So, if, if you have the theme vision and you read it, keep reading it. Especially the declarations of the month of November. Read them. So, when after the service during today or this week, get a copy and read because I believe impartation is released. Uh, there's a certain impartation that is released. When you read from an author who has been writing, spent his life praying for the book, and then it is published, there's an anointing so that you don't have to meet him, but you can meet him in a book. Hallelujah. We want to now read the scriptures. Uh, please stand as we prepare to read Psalms 91. Again, we want to remind the ladies that the dinner is coming. Uh, register. At the desk, there's a desk there. Dinner on the 25th of November. Um, Ladies, get your place, get your seat, come uh, as you enjoy the, the end of year dinner with the ladies. Uh, a very special friend of mine, Reverend Julian uh, Kula will be preaching uh, and I know there's a word for that season. Psalms 91, I want us to read it together, uh, those 16 verses. Here we go. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely He will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with His feathers and under His wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you make the Most High your dwelling, even the Lord who is my refuge, then no harm will befall you. No disaster will come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guide you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread upon the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. This is the word of the Lord, and God's people say it. Please be seated. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for your word and the opportunity to speak it. The opportunity to listen to it. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. The Lord Jesus said, And man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Father, there is a word that is proceeding from your mouth. Speak to us this afternoon. May your word find a place in our hearts. Again, we thank you for this month of November as we introduce this subject, covenant protection, blessed refuge. May we engage and connect to what the Lord is saying to us today. 
Lord, thank you for those watching online and we speak also a blessing upon them that together with us, they will be blessed. We pray this in faith and in thanksgiving. In Jesus' name and God's people say it. Amen. Tell your neighbor, covenant protection. This is a special month and I believe uh, God continues to un unveil for us many of the covenant blessings he has given us. This month, we are talking about covenant protection. And in this Psalms 91, God reveals his heart about protecting us. And I'll be sharing about four things that I would like us to remember. But before I do that, I want to read uh, this story that is found in 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 15, to see how the man of God experienced God's protection. 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 15. The Bible says, when the servant of the man of God got up and went out early the next morning, an army with horses and chariots had surrounded the city. Oh, my Lord, what shall we do? The servant asked. Don't be afraid, the prophet answered. Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elisha prayed, O oh Lord. Open his eyes so he may see. Then the Lord opened the servant's eyes and he looked and saw the, hill, the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. <clears throat> As the enemy came down toward him, Elisha prayed to the Lord, Strike these people with blindness. So he struck them with blindness as Elisha had asked. Elisha told them, this is not the road, and this is not the city. Follow me, and I will lead you to the man you are looking for. And he led them to Samaria. Can you imagine a whole army blinded, being taken to Samaria? After they entered the city, Elisha said, Lord, open the eyes of these men <clears throat> so they can see. <clears throat> then the Lord opened their eyes, and they looked. And there they were, inside Samaria. When the king of Israel saw them, he asked Elisha, Shall I kill them, my father? Shall I kill them? Do not kill them, he answered. Would you kill men you have captured with your own sword or bow? Set food and water before them, so that they may eat and drink, and then go back to their master. Now, if you do that to your enemy, what do you think will happen? So he prepared a great feast for them. Oh, it was a great feast. And when the Bible says it was a great feast, it was a mega feast. So he prepared a great feast for them. And after they had finished eating and drinking, he sent them away and they returned to their master. So the bands from Aram stopped raiding Israel's territory. This is a story which is not just a story, this is the reality of how God protects his people. Hallelujah. The interesting thing that, that when the servant woke up, the servant saw a great army surrounding the city. Elisha was very relaxed because he knew his God. He, was, he had also seen what God was already doing in the spiritual realm. And so God, Elisha tells God, open this man's eyes so that he can see the kind of protection that we have. When his eyes were opened, he saw chariots of fire and angels surrounding the man of God. Let me say this. There may be an army in the city, but there is an invisible army around God's people. Hallelujah. Around God's people. And so when God talks to us through Psalms 91, He's telling us and assuring us that he's a God of covenant. He's a God who wants to protect us. In fact, in Genesis chapter 15, verse 1, God is assuring Abraham concerning the covenant. And this is what he says, Genesis 15, verse 1. After this, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abraham. And then he said something that is protective. He said, I am your shield. 
your very great reward. Today we want to declare that God is our shield. And God is our protector. In Psalms 91, God reveals the things that remind us of his protection. Let me read verse 1 and 2. This is what the Bible says. As he gives us the pictures about himself, he also reveals four names that will protect us. The Bible says, he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High. That is the first name of the Lord. The Most High. And today we sang that song, that you are the Most High God. The Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. Now, Almighty is the other name. So we have the Most High. We have also Almighty. Almighty is the Hebrew name El Shaddai. The all-powerful one. Then verse 2 goes on to say, I will say of the Lord. That is the third name. The Lord, in capital letters, is the word translated Jehovah. He is my refuge and my fortress. And then the fourth name is the word God. So we have the Most High, Almighty, Jehovah, and God. God is the Hebrew word Elohim, the, uh, the self-existing one. So those four names of the Lord is where later in this psalm it says, because he acknowledges my name. Those are the names. The Most High God. Jehovah. El Shaddai. Elohim. And those are the names that protect us. And we can find security. And we can find safety in those names. But there are four pictures that God gives to remind us about his care for us. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, God cares for you. So these are the four names that I want to bring to our attention that will remind us of God's protection, God's covenant protection. The first one is, God is our shelter. The second one, God is our refuge. The third one, God is our fortress. And the fourth one, God is the one who spreads his wings over us. He's our shelter. He's our refuge. He's our fortress. He spreads his wings over us. Let me start with the first one. God is our shelter. And God is assuring us that he is our shelter. And his shelter for us means his presence. The Bible says in his presence there is fullness of joy. In Psalms 100 it says, I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise, and entering into God's presence, when we are there, we cannot be challenged. Tell your neighbor, in his presence, you cannot be challenged. That's what he says in verse 1, Psalms 91, verse 1. Let me read that again. That's what it says. It says, he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High. He will not be afraid. Instead, he will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. There is rest in the presence of God. There is security in the presence of God. Psalms 27 verse 5 says this. Psalms 27 verse 5. That's another amazing psalm. If you read it, you'll be very encouraged. It says, for in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his tabernacle and set me high upon a rock. Moses needed that assurance. And in the book of Exodus, chapter 33, verse 12, he was having a conversation with God. And this is what the Bible says concerning Moses. He's about to take the people of Israel to the promised land. Exodus 33, 12. Moses said to the Lord, you have been telling me, lead these people. But you have not let me know whom you will send with me. You have said, I know you by name. And you have found favor with me. If you are pleased with me, teach me your ways so I may know you and continue to find favor with you. Remember that this nation is your people. The Lord replied, my presence will go with you. And I will give you rest. Then Moses said to him, 
if your presence does not go with us, do not send us up from here. Let me say this. You are protected. I'm saying you are protected. You're protected in the presence of the Lord. Jesus said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. God will not, not leave you. He'll never forsake you. In fact, Psalms 121 again reminds us that God is our helper. In his presence, there is help. Hallelujah. I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from Jehovah, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is watching over you. I want to read, there's a verse, just go back up, I think it's verse 3. <coughs> Alright, I want, let me read this in the New King James Version. Because there's a story one time I heard that was very interesting. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. There was a pastor who was facing um, a problem with his foot. And he went to hospital and they were going to amputate it because it was, it was just bad. And so he was praying. He was not very assured. Some members came to encourage him, but he was not encouraged. You know, pastors sometimes when they go through a difficult time, they find it very hard to be encouraged. Hello? Because they are the ones who encourage others. Now he's not being encouraged. He's reading the Bible, wondering why God has done this. Tomorrow they're going to cut off his, his, his foot. And he's wondering. So this member, who, who some people just take for granted, comes and says, Pastor, I'm not going to pray for you. I just want to read Psalms uh, 121. And she read verse 3. And this is what she read. He will not allow your foot to be moved. Hello? The pastor said, Ebu, Ebu, read that again. <laughs> he will not allow your foot to be moved. And for that pastor, it struck such a momentous word that he got so excited and said, please read that verse again. He will not allow, God will not allow your foot to be moved. For him, this is how he translated it. This foot is not going to be amputated. So, this lady left and the pastor became very happy when the doctors came uh, to check on him, to prepare him. Uh, he was so happy. And the doctors were wondering, this guy has been very depressed. Why is he so happy? Uh, so, he's so happy and they thought that uh, he was beginning to get um, ecstatic and he was beginning to get hysteria. And they wanted to give him some more medication uh, so that this happiness would uh, go back to depression. <laughs> I wonder why doctors want us to just feel depressed. And so this guy said, but hey doctor, I've just re received some news. And says, what is that news? My foot is not going to be moved. I says, who told you that? He says, a, a very special doctor friend of mine. Hallelujah. Sent me that information. What is this doctor friend of yours called? He's Dr. Jesus and he has just told me my foot will not be moved. And of course the doctor now felt that it was very imperative that this guy be given more medication. <laughs> because when a man starts talking like that, something has gone wrong. And he left the next day when the nurses came and they were checking the situation did another x-ray, and they could not believe what they saw because there was nothing wrong with that foot. <laughs> nothing wrong with that foot, you know. And the doctor was so amazed, and he came back to this person and says, do you have the address of this Dr. Jesus? I would like to consult with him. Let me tell you this. The Lord will protect you. There are times God uses his word in an amazing way. Hmm? I had another story of another lady who was really having it rough in hospital. She was about to give birth to a baby. And she was also not being very uh, comforted about this situation. 
And then this lady comes and prays with her and says, by the way, the Lord has given me a word for you. Your labor in the Lord is not in vain. <laughs> Hallelujah. And for sure, she gave birth without a problem because her labor in the Lord was not in vain. I want to say to anyone here, ladies who are about to give birth and you are worried about your situation, your labor is not in vain. I am saying your labor is not in vain. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I understand the issues of labor. I'm saying I understand the issues of labor. When we were having our first child, Martha went into labor. And I was there at Nairobi Hospital, very strong and courageous, a mighty man of God, M-O-G. <laughs> and so I went to the ward, I went to the labor ward. And you know, these are things you're seeing for the first time. You know, you've never heard your wife scream and things like that. And she's there, she's standing, and her sister is there rubbing her back, rubbing her back, rubbing her back. Then she tells me, hey, pastor, please, you continue rubbing your wife's back. So they are talking. And I'm rubbing her back, rubbing her back, rubbing her back. And the two of them are talking. It's like, there's nothing wrong here. Then suddenly she screams. Hey! I stop rubbing her back. It's like an electric shock. <laughs> I said, mother, mother, you okay? You okay? A minute later, she's calm, quiet, and the conversation <laughs> is going on. I'm wondering, what just happened? Anyway, I continue rubbing her back now, but cautiously. <laughs> and she went again into these pains, and I'm telling you, I was traumatized. So traumatized, I left the labor ward, and Nairobi hospital, and I went to the parking lot, just walking at the parking lot. A nurse who was there, one of the head nurses there, found me at the parking. He said, Ambrose, what are you doing? I'm saying, I'm, I'm observing the cars that are in this uh, car park. Uh, and then she tells me, I thought I heard that Martha is in labor ward. Yeah, yeah, she's there. In fact, you can just go see her. Says, Ambrose, we are going back with you. I nearly rebuked her in the spirit. I rebuke you in Jesus' name. Because I was not planning to go, to go back. But I went back. She took me there. Went back. This, the lady is actually here. Uh, Mrs. Thiga. Uh, she was a normal hospital. She took, took me back to labor ward. Martha is fine. By the time I arrived, she's fine. You know, but labor was quite a challenge. It reached a stage when the doctors came with papers. They say, uh, are you the husband to this lady? I said, yes. I say, they, sh they said, we are taking her into the theater. Because this is going to be a, a cesarean section thing. And I said, can you, can you put your signature here uh, to give consent? <clears throat> At that time, you don't think. You're just saying, Sawa, Sawa. You're signing, <laughs> but you're trembling. Saying, Father, I had a difficult time. But the Lord was my shelter. That baby was born. I was called. But that was an experience I did not want to repeat. The next time Martha became pregnant, I said, Ten. No wonder when some husbands hear their wives are pregnant, it is not good news. <laughs> Hello? It is not good news. But in situations like that, that are so human, God is saying, I will be your shelter. Hallelujah. I will protect you. And I'm, I'm not speaking to the husbands in the house. I will be with you. Hallelujah. I will watch over you. Speaking to the ladies, oh, God is going to be with you. He will shelter you. He will protect you. And especially when it is a first pregnancy, you really don't know what to do. And, but God is saying, 
I will cover you. My presence will go with you. Hallelujah. Very quickly, not only is God our shelter, he is our refuge. He is our refuge. And when we talk about God's refuge, we are talking about the word he speaks to us. God gives us a word that becomes our refuge. <clears throat> Psalms 46, verse 1 says this. This is a verse we know. God is speaking it to us. Speaking his word to us. And the Bible says, God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Isaiah 25 Verse 4 repeats nearly the same thing. And this is what it says. Isaiah 25, verse 4. You have been a refuge for the poor, a refuge for the needy in his distress, a shelter from the storm, and a shade from the heat. For the breath of the ruthless is like a storm driving against a wall, and like the heat of the desert. You silence the uproar of for you silence the uproar of foreigners, as heat is reduced by the shadow of a cloud. So the song of the ruthless is stilled. God is saying, "I am your refuge." Hallelujah! I am your refuge. I am your refuge. I am your refuge. His word is a refuge. When God gives you a promise, He's covering you. He's saying, "I will protect you." It doesn't matter how many, which doctors are arrayed against you. God will protect you. A situation of witchcraft happened in the Bible, Numbers 23, when Balaam was trying to curse the people of God, whom God had already declared he will protect them. Numbers 23, let me read you that story briefly. The Bible says, Balaam said, build me seven altars here and prepare seven bulls and seven rams for me. Balak did, as Balaam said, and the two of them offered a bull and a ram on each altar. Then Balaam said to Balak, stay here beside your offering while I go aside. Perhaps the Lord will come to meet with me. Whatever he reveals to me, I will tell you. Then he went off to a barren height. God met with him, and Balaam said, I have prepared seven altars, and on each altar I have offered a bull and a ram. The Lord put a message in Balaam's mouth and said, Go back to Balak and give him this message. So he went back to him and found him standing beside his offering with all the princes of Moab. Then Balaam uttered this oracle. Now he's singing, it's kind of like a song he's singing. Balak brought me from the Aram, the king of Moab from the eastern mountains. Come, he said, cast Jacob for me. Come, denounce Israel. How can I cast those whom God has not cast? How can I denounce those whom the Lord has not denounced? From the rocky peaks, I see them. From the heights, I view them. I see a people who live apart and do not consider themselves one of the nations. Who can count the dust of Jacob or number the fourth part of Israel? Let me die the death of the righteous and may my end be like theirs. Balak said to Balaam, what have you done to me? I brought you to curse my enemies. But you have done nothing but bless them. He answered, Must I not speak what the Lord puts in my mouth? Then Balak said to him, Come with me to another place where you can see them. You will see only a part but not all of them. And from there, cast them for me. So he took him to the field of Zophim on the top of Pisgah. And there he built seven altars and offered a bull and a ram on each altar. Balaam said to Balak, Stay here beside your offering while I meet with him over there. The Lord met with Balaam and put a message in his mouth and said, Go back to Balak and give him this message. So he went to him and found him standing beside his offering with the princes of Moab. Balak asked him, What did the Lord say? Then he uttered his oracle, Arise, Balak, and listen. Hear me, son of Zippor. God is not a man. That he should lie. Hallelujah. God is not a man that he should lie. Nor a son of man that he should change his mind. Does he speak and then not act? Does he promise and not fulfill? I have received a command to bless. He has blessed. 
and I cannot change it. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor you have been blessed. And God is not changing it. Tell your neighbor there is no curse. That is going to rest on you. The Lord has already, pro- uh, the Lord ha- has already spoken. He will protect you. With his word. Hallelujah. Let me tell you this. If you're looking for refuge in any situation or circumstance, look for it in the word of God. There's a song we used to sing that says, Nimeji ficha kwenye mwamba Mwamba usi yo tingisika Nimeji ficha kwenye mwamba Mwamba usi yo tingisika a rock that can never be shaken, a refuge, a hiding place. And if you hide in the word of God, there is no weapon that is fashioned against you that will prosper in Jesus' name. Yes, come on, give God a big hand and bless his name. God's word is so powerful. Psalms 19 verse 7. This is what the Bible says. Psalms 19 verse 7. God will protect you. He says, the law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are sure and altogether righteous. They are more precious than gold, than much pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, than the honey from the comb. By them is your servant warned. In keeping them, there is great reward. God's word will protect you. God's word will protect you. God's word will protect you. When the devil was beating Jesus up and down, Jesus stood up against him and he said, It is written. It is written. It is written. There is no other weapon you have but the word of God. Which is your refuge? Which is your place of protection? Tell your neighbor, the word will protect you. Let me say this. It doesn't matter what situation you're facing. Maybe it is a financial situation. The word of God knows how to protect you. Maybe it is a family situation. Find your refuge in the word of God. Maybe it is a work-related situation. With your boss or with your colleagues. Find refuge in the word. The Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are, they are safe. When Goliath was speaking things against David, one of the things he said is this, that even as, he, as David was approaching, Goliath said, I curse you by my gods. Hello? David re- responded by saying, You come to me with javelin and spear. I come to you in the name of the Lord my God. Hallelujah. You know there are spirits around us. There are people who walk around with demonic spirits. Hello. There are people who walk around. And it's not just them who are cursing us. They are cursing us by their gods. By their spirits. I believe that there are people who curse Kenya by their gods. Hello? And they are speaking like, just like Balaam. Balaam is trying to curse God. He's coming to another place, curse these people. Coming to another place, curse these people. Let me tell you this. Kenya's destiny does not lie in anything else but in the hands of the living God. Some of us are trying to hold Kenya so that it doesn't fall. We, it is so heavy. Kenya is so heavy for us. We are praying and, and one day things are okay. The next day, things are not okay. We are just going up and down and saying, Oh God, if, if you don't show up, I, we, we are going to fall. And God he says, who told you to try and save Kenya in your power? Who told you? The Bible says in Psalms chapter 2 verse 8, a very clear word. And this is what it says. It says, ask of me and I will make the nations work. Your inheritance, the ends of the earth, your possession. And God is saying, listen, I am your refuge. 
I'm your hiding place. Put Kenya in my hands. I can handle this nation. Hallelujah. If I could handle Israel, I can handle this nation. And God will only rescue us through his word. Through his word. In fact, Isaiah chapter 43 says this. And I believe this is a word for Kenya too. This is what God is saying. But now, this is what the Lord says. He who created you, O Jacob. He who formed you, O Israel. Fear not. For what? I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are what? You're mine. <clears throat> Look at verse 2. When you pass, it doesn't say if you pass. It says, when you pass through the waters, you will be alone. Huh? I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt for your ransom, Cush and Seba in your stead. And so when people are cursing our land by their gods, because they have certain intentions, let me tell you this, we come against them in the name of the Lord, our God. Hallelujah. And this name is able to do exceedingly, abundantly above what we ask or imagine. When the children of Israel were running from Egypt and they thought they were safe, they ran and ran until they hit the Red Sea and they didn't know where to go. Exodus 14, around verse 10, this is what the Bible says. They now got scared. They didn't know what to do. The Bible says as Pharaoh approached, the Israelites looked up and there were the Egyptians marching after them. They were terrified and they cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, was it because there were no graves in Egypt? Now, can you see how they, they're talking? When people are scared, they can't say anything. Was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you brought us to the desert to die? What have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt? Didn't we say to you, and we've been telling you all this, didn't we say to you in Egypt, leave us alone. Let us serve the Egyptians. It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the desert. <clears throat> Moses answered the people. Do not be afraid. Stand firm and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. Can you imagine? The Lord will do what? Will fight for you. You need only to be still. Then the Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to move on. Now, which is, which is the on? Which was the on site? The Red Sea. Raise your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea to divide the water so that the Israelites can go through the sea on dry ground. I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them. And I will gain glory through the Pharaoh and all his army through his chariots and his horsemen. The Egyptians will know that I am the Lord when I gain glory through Pharaoh, his chariots and his horsemen. Then the angel of God who had been traveling in front of Israel's army withdrew and went behind them. The pillar of cloud also moved from in front and stood behind them and now stood between them and the Egyptians. The Lord knows how to protect you. Come on, the Lord knows how to protect you. Huh? The Lord will move on your behalf. I don't know what you're going through. The Lord will move on your behalf. He is your refuge. But number three, he is your fortress. These are words and pictures. God is saying, this is to tell you who I am. This is who I am. That word fortress talks about strength. Strength. Psalms 18 verse 2. Let me read that verse. It says this. Psalms 18 verse 2. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Can you see the words he has used? Rock, 
fortress, deliverer, rock, refuge, shield, horn, stronghold. And he's saying, with these words, it's just to help your mind understand the kind of protection I have for you. He is our strength. Psalms 27 verse 1 says this. Psalms 27 verse 1. Again, Psalms 27 is an amazing psalm. A psalm of protection. It says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evil men advance against me to devour my flesh, when my enemies and my foes attack me, they are the ones who will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then I will be confident. Tell your neighbor, you look confident. Tell them, now you better be more confident. <laughs> Hallelujah. Look at verse 13 of that psalm. In verse, that verse, I don't know what you're going through, but this is your verse. The Bible says, I am still confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Maybe this year, some of you are beginning to wonder. The year is wrapping up. And the miracle you had believed God for has not yet come. Let me tell you this. This year will not end. Before God gets in touch with you. This year will not end. God is not a man that he should lie. He hasn't told you all these things just to let you go. God is your strength. He will fight for you. He will fight for you. He is your strength. Psalms 28 verse 7 to 9 repeats nearly the same thought. So let me read it for you. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him and I am helped. My heart leaps for joy and I will give thanks to him in song. Now look at verse 8. The Lord is the strength of his people. A fortress of salvation for his anointed one. And verse 9. Save your people and bless your inheritance. Be their shepherd and carry them forever. The Lord is your strength. The Lord is your strength. I don't know if you're going through a difficult time. Maybe your life is full of debts. Maybe right now because of the economy and the challenges of our nation, things have just not worked well for you and they're becoming worse by the day. Let me tell you this, the Lord has not abandoned you. The Lord is your strength. The Lord will help you. The Lord will fight your battle. Just like he told Jehoshaphat, I'll fight your battle. All you need to do is to sing and to praise my name. And when the people began to sing and to praise the name of the Lord, God sent ambushes and God delivered them. Let me tell you this, the Lord will deliver you. One time Israel was going through a very difficult time. They were facing a challenge of some enemies and they came to the prophet Elisha to save them. Second Kings chapter 3. Let me read that story and just show you that God is a God of strength. The Bible says Joram, son of Ahab, became king of Israel in Samaria in the 18th year of Joseph, king of Judah, and he reigned 12 years. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord, but not as his father and mother had done. He got rid of the sacred stone of Baal that his father had made. Nevertheless, he clung to the sins of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, which he had caused Israel to commit. He did not turn away from them. Now, Mesha, king of Moab, raised sheep. This was a deal gone wrong. Hello? This, this was a business deal gone wrong at a governmental level. Hello? Now, Mesha, king of Moab, raised sheep, and he had to supply the king of Israel with 100,000 lambs and with wool of 100,000 rams. Can you see demand and supply? But after Ahab died, the king of Moab, Akaruka, Hello? Akaruka is a Hebrew word that just means that. Moab did what? Rebelled. And that happens to many of us. Sometimes in our businesses, you, 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 you engage and everything goes so well. 
Things are happening, and then one day somebody just says, we never made that deal. And you don't know what to do. You loan somebody money, and they're not non-believers, they're Christians. They come to Parklands Baptist Church. Hello? And they say, in one month, Talipa, that month, they don't show up in church. You call them Mteja. The day you meet them, they tell you, we never made that deal. Hello? We never made that deal. A young man came to me one time. He says, Ambrose, just give me 3,000 shillings. I want to start a business of selling eggs. Once I, I sell them, I'll, I'll get some money. I'll buy more eggs. Give me, give me a month, 3,000. See, I gave him. Hello? <laughs> the guy went and did his business. Enjoyed himself. After a month, I'm waiting for my 3,000 shillings. He is nowhere to be found. Those were days when there were no cell phones, so you could not call him. So there's nothing like that. The following month, by that time, 3,000 shillings was a lot of money. You, you guys, that, that 3,000 shillings was a lot of money. And I'm, at that time, I'm a bachelor. I'm, I'm just a, a youth pastor, and I'm having fun. Somebody is walking around with my 3,000. So one day I got so excited because as I was preaching, he was in the service. <laughs> and let me tell you this. I could not now see anything else. I saw my 3,000 shillings sitting in the service. <laughs> uh, I nearly changed the sermon to preach, uh, the, to preach about whatever you have been given, please return. <laughs> I preached and I knew my 3,000 is in the service. After the service, I ran to the door as people were coming out so that I can greet the people. Now this guy is passing through that door, you know, and he's saying, Pastor, nakumbuka, nakumbuka. Takuletea, takuletea. Now you think I was not bothered. I was so bothered. Next Sunday, I could not think of anything but my 3,000 shillings in the service. Then God spoke to me, he says, Ambrose, release the 3,000 shillings. I said, no, no. <laughs> Uh, he must pay. But God convinced me and let I released that 3,000. So next time this guy met me, he said, ah, Ambrose, ah, I'm still remembering. I said, don't worry. You don't owe me anything. I know some of you owe a lot of money, not 3,000. Much more. So I'm not telling you to let go. So tell your neighbor, that's what, what Ambrose is saying. Otherwise, I'm going to have problems. What I'm saying is that deals can go wrong. So let me finish that story and tell you that you don't need to be afraid. God is watching over you. Let me finish that story. After Ahab died, the king of Moab rebelled against the king of Israel. So, that, so at that time, King Joram set out for Samaria and mobilized all Israel. Now, this is a whole nation. It's not just two people. No, this is a nation. They're going to fight. He also sent... This message to Jehoshaphat, king of Judah. The king of Moab has rebelled against me. Will you go with me to fight against Moab? And he said, I will go. By what route shall we attack? He asked. Through the desert of Edom, he answered. So the king of Israel set out with the king of Judah. And the king of Edom, after around about March of seven days, the army had no more water for themselves. They had been going around and around until their water got finished. And they had no water for themselves and for the animals. Now, a bigger problem had showed up. What, exclaimed the king of Israel, has the Lord God called us three kings together only to hand us over to Moab? But Jehoshaphat asked, is there no prophet of the Lord here that we may inquire of the Lord through him? An officer of the king of Israel answered, Elisha, son of Shaphat, is here. He used to pour water on the hands of Elijah. Jehoshaphat said, the word of the Lord is with him. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat and the king of Edom went down to him. Elisha said to the king of Israel, What do we have to do with each other? Go to the prophets of your father and the prophets of your mother. No, the king of Israel answered, Because it was the Lord who called us three kings together to hand us over to Moab. But now bring me a harpist. That's what Elisha said. While the harpist was playing, the hand of the Lord came upon Elisha. And he said, now this is what I want you to catch. This is what the Lord says. Make this valley full of ditches. 
For this is what the Lord says. You will see neither wind nor rain. Yet this valley will be filled with water. And you and your cattle and your other animals will drink. And then he said this. This is an easy thing in the eyes of the Lord. He will also hand Moab over to you. God is saying to you, it is an easy thing for me. God is saying, I'm going to rescue you. It is an easy thing for me. Do not be worried. Don't revenge. Don't fight. But I want you to dig ditches. Dig the ditches of prayer. Dig the ditches of forgiveness. Dig the ditches of praise. And wait upon the Lord. I will fill the ditches. You will be satisfied. Your animals will be satisfied. And this enemy of yours, I will also sort him out. Let me tell you this. God knows how to sort out your debts. Let me speak to the other ones on this side. God knows how to sort out your debts. It's like those people have no debts. I'm saying, God will sort out your debts. Now there are more debts here. I'm saying, <laughs> God will sort out your debts. What about Konashida? But God is able to do exceedingly. Yes. He will sort you out. He knows how to turn your situation around. Despite what is happening in our land. Hallelujah. He is our fortress. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, the Lord is our fortress. Finally, the Lord is our wings. He, gave, he put their wings around us. Okay, their wings. And I want to finish with this. I will not elaborate much on it so much. But I want to tell you that God's wings, his angels are around us. Psalms 36 verse 7. Very quickly. Psalms 36 verse 7. The Bible says, How priceless is your unfailing love. Both high and low among men find refuge in the shadow of your, of your wings. Exodus 25 verse 20. The Bible says this. Exodus 25, verse 20. The cherubim are to have their wings spread upward, overshadowing the cover with them. The cherubim are to face each other, looking toward the cover. That word cover is the ark of the covenant. And then Ruth, chapter 2, verse 12. The Bible says this, Ruth 2, verse 12. Again, talking about wings. May the Lord repay you for what you have done. May you be richly rewarded by the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to take refuge. No wonder it says in Psalms 91, verse 11. This is what the Bible says about these angels. Psalms 91, verse 11. Angels are coming your way. I'm saying angels are coming your way. For he will command his angels concerning you. To do what? To guard you. In what? In all your ways. Look at verse 12. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Psalms 34 verse 7. The Bible says this. Again talking about angels. Psalms 34 verse 7. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who do what? And he does what? His wings are above you. Hallelujah. His wings are above you. I want to just give an illustration. I need some angels. I need Pastor Kiniti and I need Georgie. They are the angels. The Bible says the angels face each other and they stretch their wings and there is a cover. The covenant box is there. So they are the angels of God. And so, there's one angel on this side, and there's another angel on this side. And they stretch their wings. Alright? They stretch their wings. They cover you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Deacon Waitara, you're the one who needs help. So, the Bible says, Psalms 91, these angels cover you. The wings, these wings protect you. And so, Deacon Waitara, come under here. All right. Unaza squat. 
ambao nataka kunila Hallelujah Now listen this is what the Bible says Psalms 91 Now let me read it with this illustration here Psalms 91 That's what it says verse 1 He who dwells in the shelter of the most high will rest in the shadow of the almighty I will say this is what Waitara will say of the Lord he is my refuge and my fortress my god in whom I trust look at verse 3 surely he will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence look at verse 4 he will cover you with what with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge his faithfulness will be your shield and your rampart the angels are covering you i'm saying the angels are covering you they are overshadowing you in jesus name God bless you guys. Thank you Aitara. Bless you. Amen. He's covering you. Aitara, God is covering your family also. He is overshadowing you in your family in Jesus name. God is God, God is about to do amazing things. In 7 days some things will shift in your life. God is moving in your life in Jesus name. Amen. God bless you. Tell your neighbor he will overshadow you. with his feathers you know i keep telling this story which says this this lady was kajaked and in the car as they were going around and around she tried to remember psalms 91 she could not remember it she's trying to remember what did what the bible say what the bible say because she's in a panic oh god what 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 psalm 91 psalm 91 he she cannot the only thing she remembered was the word feathers so right in the middle as we were driving she cried out feathers feathers These guys broke open the doors they were so terrified they took off in different direction the lady has her eyes are still closed feathers god had had her verse 3 that's where that verse comes from verse 3 let's read that It says this Psalm 21 surely he will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence verse 4 verse 4 he will cover you with his that's all she remembered and let me tell you this when you are in a panic situation and there's nothing you can remember just remember <laughs> and just say feathers the angels of god who overshadow you will begin to flap their wings around you and lift you up they will pull you out of your situation they will pull you out of your circumstances and they will put you on a rock that cannot be shaken this is god's protection for you you better receive it now in jesus name amen amen please stand up four things what was the first one what was the first one what was the second one What was the third one? What was the fourth one? Now in a congregation like this, sometimes things can be very funny. You reach home and somebody tells you, "How was the service?" "Hey, that was a powerful service." What did the pastor say? "Feathers." <laughs> and that's all you can remember. Please, with the feathers, remember God is our protection. Our shelter our refuge our fortress the one who spreads his wings over us hallelujah you are covered your family is covered your children are covered your business is covered your profession is covered our country is covered let us believe in god amen let us pray Thank you Jesus. As we pray, we've just started the month of November. It's a very special time for you to even dedicate your life to God and say, Lord, I want to rededicate my life this month. I may have been so worried last month. I was too worried, I was so anxious, I even forgot 
to call on your name. Lord, I rededicate myself to you. I rededicate my family to you. Maybe you're here and you're still not born again. The month has started the 11th month. In January, you said this year you'd give your life to Christ. But now it is in November. December is coming. Before you know it, we are in 2018. That decision you've been keeping, you keep procrastinating. Maybe this is your moment in time. God has already assured you that he will protect you. So wherever you are, whisper a prayer to God. And just tell God, I dedicate my life to you this month. Watch over me. Watch over my children. They have just closed school. And Lord, I need finances. I need resources to keep them these two months they are on holiday. Maybe a difficult challenge in your life. God has already told you. He is your refuge. He is your shelter. He is your fortress. His wings are over you. Believe him. Trust him. Whisper that prayer and tell God, this is my situation. Like Jehoshaphat, they came, they came to Elisha and Elisha gave them an answer. And God said, for me, this is an easy thing. Don't sweat it. For me, this is an easy one. I will come through for you. God knows your debts. God knows how to give you an instruction and how to multiply what you have so that you can pay your debts and live on the rest. The Lord is your maker. The Lord is a way maker. Miracle worker. Promise keeper. The Lord will do it for you. So whisper that prayer. And tell God your situation. And later if you need to see one of us. Pastor Kiniti and the response team that is here, counselors. Come to them and just pray with them. God is turning your situation around. I'm saying God is turning your situation around. And I know the worship team is in place. And I want them to just sing that song a bit that we sang earlier. Even as we prepare to pray. That God is watching over you. He's our way maker. He's our miracle worker. Let's join them and then I will pray. That prayer to bless us. Let us join them. That's right. people who has been postponing a decision and you want somebody to pray with you as we sing again you come Pastor Kinit is here he will meet you we will pray with you for that breakthrough we'll pray for you for that situation God will break through for you the way maker will become very real to you so you make your way here we'll just take one or two minutes just for you to come and then we shall release you uh, with a blessing.
worship team. Got a big hand. Amen. Thank you for coming forward. He is your way maker. He is your miracle worker. He is your promise keeper. Whatever it is you're bringing before the altar today, God knows what to do about it. Hallelujah. God knows what to do about it. If it is salvation, you're giving your life to Christ, God will open a door for you that no man can shut. Amen. Just come, come, come through. All right. Just come. You are here. Moving in our midst. I worship. I worship. you to believe God. I want you to believe God. Something is about to open up in your life. I want you to believe God. He will make a way in Jesus name. He is making a way in Jesus name. He is making a way in Jesus name. He is making a way in Jesus name. He is your way maker. Miracle worker. God loves you. God loves you. It doesn't matter what is it is, God will make a way. He's your protector in Jesus' name. He will make a way. The Lord will bless you indeed. The Lord is starting to bless you right now. A way is being opened for you. The Lord is your refuge. The Lord is your fortress. The Lord is blessing you right now. 
The Lord is opening a door for you that no man can shut. The Lord is your maker. The Lord will come through for you. In Jesus name. The Lord loves you. The Lord is blessing you. Trust him. The Bible says trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not rely on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him. He will straighten your paths. The Lord is your miracle. The Lord is your shield. He is your great reward. The Lord is your strength. The Bible says fear not for I am with you. Be not dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my victorious right hand. The Lord is your maker. The Lord is your maker. The Lord is your maker. Shall we pray? Father, please stretch your hands to these ones who are up here. Let's just bless them upstairs downstairs include yourself in that blessing if you need to be part of that blessing father in jesus name lord we could spend a whole day just waiting upon the lord but in this moment in time this your servant is praying for these ones who've come forward god you know their situation you know the cry of their heart today lord we join them to say lord make a way make a way for them break through for them oh lord this month of november be their protector be their blessed refuge lord as they dedicate their lives as they surrender their situations to you god receive them receive them the way they are lord if it is salvation save those who want to be saved if it is restoration restore those who need to be restored if it is healing heal and set them free from that burden if it is a, a debt if it is something they owe god meet that need according to your riches and glory father if it is a fear they have had deliver them from that fear and now be their way maker they be their promise keeper and father i know right now something is happening i pray now the holy spirit holy spirit come upon them and lord not just them come upon this congregation come upon the, those who are upstairs those who are downstairs those who are in the overflow tent wherever you are just begin to say lord come upon me come upon me afresh renew me protect me watch over me i sit under your shadow i am in your shelter i'm in your refuge i am safe and i receive it today if you believe that you better say I receive it. I take it. It is my portion. And there's nothing the devil can do about it. Now we better all give God a big hand and tell him thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. I want to say for you to you who are standing here. Your page is just turned over. God has just turned a new page for you. I'm saying God has just turned a new page for you. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. Amen. Pastor Kennedy, please guide them even as I take a moment to pray for this congregation. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor God is protecting you. Amen. So, let's appreciate these ones one more time. God bless you. Bless you. We need your contact so that Pastor Ambrose can get in touch with you. And God bless you so much. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor it is well. Now, we want to pray. So lift up your hands. By the way, did you learn anything? What did you learn? Feathers. Sawa. <laughs> May the feathers of God cover you. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you. May the Lord who protected David protect you. May the Lord who protected Moses protect you. May the Lord who protected Joshua protect you. May the Lord who protected Deborah protect you. 
May the Lord who protected Esther protect you. May the living God Almighty protect you. May the Most High protect you. May the Almighty protect you. May Jehovah protect you. May Elohim protect you. May He protect your family. May He protect your business. May He protect your career. May He protect your grandchildren. May He protect your children. May He bless you and make you a blessing. If you receive that, you better say, I receive it. I take it. It is my portion. And there is nothing the devil can do about it. Now, the month of November is going to be an amazing month for you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now, look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, surely goodness and mercy shall follow you. I mean you. All the days of your life. And you shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever and ever safe secure provided for covered insured blessed to be a blessing amen amen and now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Shalom. Shalom.